Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. So Julie and I are going to a fly-in uh, this weekend. About an hour and a half. The first airport's about an hour and a half from where we live. So I thought um, in addition to the picnic lunch that we're gonna bring to eat while we're at the fly-in, uh, grass strip, really sort of uh, low-key event, I thought we should have an in-flight snack. So I was going to make the brown butter uh, cookie, chocolate chip cookie recipe from our channel that we did in 2014. But I've got this banana that was hanging out on the, on the counter and it is, um, it's too soft to eat. Neither of us are going to eat it. Didn't really want to make banana bread. Didn't want to wait another week for it to really get dark or another couple days for it to really get dark. So I thought, let's throw the banana in the brown butter chocolate chip cookies because brown butter and bananas go really well. Chocolate and bananas go really well, so why wouldn't it go well all together? So I've got a pot on the stove, and I'm going to take a cup of butter, and we're going to brown it off. Now, for all of our European viewers who ask all the time, how, how do you measure a cup of butter, and why don't you weigh it? Well, in Canada, you can see here, it's marked along the package. And so you just cut off as much as you need. You know, you need a quarter cup, a half a cup. And if you need a smaller amount than that, um, that's not marked on the package, the dairy farmers of Canada give out at the fall fair uh, something called a butter ruler. And so it's a, it's a little measuring stick about the same length as a pound of butter. And it's got, you know, tablespoon, teaspoon, all of those things marked on it. And you just cut off what you need. And I know that our neighbors to the south their packages are marked uh, in a similar manner, so it's, it's fairly easy. You don't have to weigh everything. So, brown butter, fairly easy. Don't get the temperature too hot. I've got this just over medium. You wanna melt the butter and then keep an eye on it until it browns, but you don't wanna get it to the point where it burns, so don't have the temperature too high. So when you're browning butter, can you hear that? Butter is mostly um, fat and milk solids with the water left behind uh, during, the, during the butter making process. But there's still a small amount of water in the butter. And that, that sound, that spitting sound, is the sound of the water being driven off. And it's going to make that sound, and then it's going to go quiet. And at the point it goes quiet is the point where you really have to watch it because that's when it starts to brown and can go too far to burn. Okay, so now it's still foaming, but the sound has changed. It has gotten significantly quieter, and it just keeps getting quieter. And at this point, you have to watch it really closely. Okay, and now I can smell a difference and you can see, maybe you can't see on camera, but the color's changing. You skim that foam off, it's starting to brown. And this is where you need to be very careful. Can you see that? Can you see how brown that's getting? As I scoop away the foam. Done. All right, so I've, I've taken it off the heat. One of the things you have to realize is that there will be carryover cooking. Your pot is still hot, and depending on your pot, it could retain heat for quite some time, which will continue to develop that browning flavor, that brown color and flavor. Um, if you leave it on a little bit too long and then you have that carryover cooking, you could risk burning it. I don't want to scare you, because it's really easy to do. These are just things you have to keep in mind when you're doing that operation. Now, it's a cookie, so everything from here on in is pretty much exactly the same. I've got white sugar into the stand mixer, and I've got brown sugar into the stand mixer. 
And on a future episode, um, I'm working on something right now for a future episode about brown sugar. Fun fact, I get a lot of people all the time giving me fun facts about brown sugar. And the most popular one is that brown sugar is just white sugar with molasses added back in. It's not that simple. It really isn't that simple. So I've got flour here, salt and baking soda, and I'm just gonna mix that up. Um, two thirds of the brown sugar sold in Canada and the one that I'm putting in here now is not made that way. It is made, the brown sugar comes from the beginning of the sugar processing process. It's brown sugar. It's not white sugar with molasses added. If you're buying in Canada the light brown sugars, like the really light brown sugars, those are white sugar with molasses added back in. Information for the United States is a little bit trickier for me to get, and it, it would appear that most brown sugar in the United States is made that way, white sugar with molasses added back in, and that might have something to do with the fact that a lot of the sugar in the United States comes from beets rather than cane sugar. Most of the sugar in Canada comes from cane rather than beet, um, except if you live in the middle provinces where they grow a lot of beets and they process them into sugar. So if you're in like Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, check your bag. It may be beet sugar rather than cane sugar. Kind of a quirk of the way things work here. And if you're in other countries in, on the planet where cane sugar is the thing, chances are your brown sugar is true brown sugar as well. So you can't make blanket statements about anything. There are nuances um, for every ingredient. But enough about that. So into the stand mixer goes the brown butter and scrape the bottom of the pot and get all of that brown goodness off of the bottom. And we'll just mix this together. Smells amazing. So next in is two eggs. I'm gonna put in two whole eggs. The original recipe for this asked for one whole egg and one egg yolk. I don't have anywhere to use the egg white and I didn't want to throw out the egg white today. So you can put in two whole eggs, it'll be no problem. And that comes together really quickly. So next in is the banana and some vanilla. And then I'm just gonna spoon in the flour while the mixer is working. A couple of spoonfuls at a time, don't overload it. Make sure that they get mixed in before you put in the next two. This smells amazing. Okay, the last ingredient is chocolate chips and you could use any kind of chocolate chip that you like. Semi-sweet, bittersweet, dark chocolate, uh, whatever floats your boat you could put in here. You could probably put butterscotch chips in because the butterscotch and the banana and the brown butter would really work together really well. You could put a combination of both in. So I'm gonna say that's mixed. Now, it's 35 degrees in the studio today. It's pretty hot. Um, well, it's hot for me anyway. And we used melted butter um, in here. So the dough is really kind of loose and thin. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge um, for maybe 45 minutes. Mmm. Mmm. That's gonna be great. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge for maybe 45 minutes before we portion them out and bake them. The dough has chilled down and the oven is preheated and I've got a little scoop. So let's scoop these out and, uh, and see what they bake up like. I'm gonna try them at sort of the typical 350 degrees, 12 to 15 minutes in the oven and see where that gets us. Really sticky, okay. Into the oven. Jules, for the, for the trip home, I made cookies. So... We did have cookies? Yes. 
Very nice. I'll have a cookie. A little in-flight snack. Um, everybody needs an in-flight snack. So, these are the brown butter chocolate chip cookie recipe that we have on our channel, and I put in a, yeah. Yeah, I can smell the banana. As soon as I open the, I, you know. I put in a mashed banana, or I mashed a banana into it. Banana right away. Tastes like banana. Don't pack them near the sandwiches. That's a joke between Julie and I. Lots of people probably share it. When you're a little kid, your mom put a banana in your lunchbox, and everything, your sandwich and everything tasted like banana. <laughs> this has got just a hint more of banana flavor than, than being banana adjacent in a lunchbox. Yes, it is distinctly a banana cookie, but banana definitely do dominates the flavor. I, don't, I think the it burnt does. butter is definitely the lost. Burnt butter is lost inside. Um, it's got a, it's got an interesting texture that the banana brought to the cookie, so it's not a crisp cookie or chewy cookie. It's a slightly cakey cookie, but it is, it's moist. It's got a moistness to it. If you like banana and you like chocolate, this is a good cookie. This is a good cookie, and I'm going to enjoy this as we fly along. So we were just in Matawa. We didn't see Big Joe Mafra. I was looking for him. And, uh, and we're flying back to Oshawa over, uh, over Canada's mid-north. Thanks for stopping by. Give these cookies a try. See you again soon.